it just showed up one day and I picked up a story because Edan needed help and no one would do it. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. And I remember I was so behind deadline. I, I just wasn't even, I didn't understand anything yet. I didn't know when things were due. And he called me and it was 11 o'clock at night. He's like, I really need your story. And I was like on the road somewhere. I wasn't even home. I was like, um, I'm gonna be home in like 30 minutes. I'll get it to you then. Didn't even write it yet. And I was like, oh shit, what am I gonna do? Write up a story in like 15 minutes. I send it and he goes, um, can you come in? And it was like midnight. My first experience is walking in and me going, um, you know, I, I was thinking maybe that I design, do you guys need help? And I remember Lita going, yes! <laughs> and then she like drags me in, she gives me a form, she says, fill this out and we'll get right back to you. And I was like, okay. And then she like explained the meetings and this is what we do and she was all upbeat. And I was like, okay, cool, I can be part of this. Um, I got broken at the beginning of my freshman year by Evan. I don't really know how that happened. And I tried to get roped in then, but Evan picked Allison over me. And then when the other assistant dropped out, Allison said, hire the girl with the pretty hair. And Evan thought that was her, but I didn't mean her. But I am the girl with the pretty hair. <laughs> I surprisingly was pretty timid my freshman year, um, but I went to the rush night like by myself. I didn't really know any journalism majors or anything, seeing as I'm not a journalism major. Um, but I just, I went to the rush night, got to meet um, Doofy, Andrew Lovell, and Corey Francer, and uh, you know, saw them with their rolled up, like, button down shirts, and walking around with their same haircut and their hats, and I was like, yeah, I, I think I want to be a part of that. I want to I write for these guys, they're pretty cool. Yeah, I came on Thursday night, I sat in the back, I remember, because I didn't know really what to expect, and I wanted to have an easy exit. It wasn't something that I wanted to do. I've learned a lot of different research tips. I mean, I've never really, before the Ithaca I had never used the reverse lookup online. I had never used Facebook to look up some of the names of not my director and all that. Now, I'm getting into the point where I'm able to develop my own voice a little bit more in even just a straight news story, um, which has come from things I've learned in class, but a lot of just, you know, having written for the paper for the four years and just been able to figure out, you know, how how I write and what my voice is like. This place made me really understand the concept of deadline and how critical that is and that is probably the most important skill that I learned is like you have to get it, you have to get it now, you have to like send out your initial emails but then you have to do your follow-up calls, you have to schedule your interviews like pretty quickly so that you can get everything down and also the sort of research that goes into like each story of like knowing what you're going to talk about before you're going in to talk to somebody, knowing their history. It's been incredibly influential on my own writing, my own editing, and just the way that I look at journalism as a whole. And I'm thankful that I did not leave the auditorium that one night. I learned absolutely everything I learned. How to write a lead, because I think I wrote my first story before I learned how to write a lead for Intro to Journalism. Like I learned it all here, I learned how to write, how to edit, how to like manage manage a publication from start to finish. Um, and I learned how to function on a, only a little bit of sleep, but to get like, to get it all done. And I think that part of the experience too is um, Michael Cerrito has to make you cry at least once, I think, during your uh, during your time at the paper. Not because he's mean, he's not mean, but if something's bad or if you mess up, it's his job to tell you, and he will tell you. And um, and it doesn't feel good, but I think that it's uh, it, it kind of comes with the territory, and it's an experience that you need to go through. Yeah, I learned a lot about getting comfortable in the space that I was shooting, mm -hmm. too, because before it was like, I'm an awkward photographer taking a picture, but I really got to like know the space and be able to feel comfortable shooting anyone and anything. After working video together, I felt like I had to step up in every photo class that I was in. Yeah. I mean, in my four years here writing for the paper, I got to write about parents on Facebook. I got to write about the School of the Americas. I got to write about a teacher here in the film department who cooks Korean food on his off time on Friday night. I mean, I didn't get to do that in these two. I feel like the best part is that you're treated like an adult, like a reporter, like you know what you're doing. 
it's not like how at some internships you're the intern. It's like you're doing your job, you're going out, finding the story, and then you have input into, you know, the angle of the story, um, in some cases the design of it. I've met some of my best friends in my life at that paper. I put my heart and soul into that paper, so just like seeing, seeing the finished product, but also just like, yeah, the friendships that come from it. You can't really compare to that. They're, they're lifelong friendships. Sometimes you want to scream, and other times you want to cry, and I think I've done both in the office. But, um, yeah, it's okay, you get over it. And luckily these people are very forgiving, or else they all hold grudges against them. <laughs> Woo! I won't miss! Well, last night at 3.30 in the morning, I thought that that was the worst part because I was, you know, up transcribing interviews and writing because I had no time to do it during the day. So that's kind of the, the worst part, but also a good part that I get to, um, that even though I'm up until late, I love what I'm doing. I won't miss Snap Judgment. I won't miss Skybar. I hate Skybar, and every time I do Skybar, I curse Michelle Berry because she made that so tiny for me. Um, freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I did not have a car, so I had to take the TCAT to every interview, and that was that was an experience. So I won't miss that. Deadlines. I won't miss needing to be by a computer 24 hours a day. I won't miss being nervous that someone's going to call me about something's wrong in my story, or they cut a story at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday, or anything like that. Um, not having any free time. Although, I don't know, that got me working harder and everything else yeah, I did. True. Something that I'm definitely not going to miss is the mini fridge in the small office. Um, the one that we had for at least a few years would make this really, really loud groaning noise every once in a while when it felt like it, and it was really distracting. Um, and then we got this new one, and I guess sometimes people forget that they leave their food in there. It's been cleaned out, and it's pretty clean now, but for some reason, whenever you open it, it smells pretty bad, and I sit right next to it. Especially during football season, I'm gonna be very happy when I can watch my Tampa Bay Buccaneers play comfort of my own home rather than from a plastic chair and a window that is minimized in the very corner of my screen. What I will miss. Um, I'm going to miss having the office just there and just being able to, you know, store all of my stuff in there. Um, I'm going to miss I'm gonna miss having everyone around, um, working with everyone. Um, I'm also really going to miss watching Michael work on a computer because I don't know why, but for some reason every time he gets on a computer and like starts typing, like I just find that really funny. I'm gonna miss the people because as when you spend so much time in here, you you get to know the people in here, and they are your colleagues, they're your editors, they're your friends, and so. Even with Casey making fun of me every five seconds because of my um, craziness and my neuroses and all those other things, she is still adorable. I'll definitely miss having a lot of input into stories. Like if you're the, you know, the newbie at your newspaper or magazine, you might just kind of get whatever's left versus being able to pitch, you know, the stories you really want to investigate and you really want to learn about. So I'll miss having that much input into it. Well, we miss having like a full-time job. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that, and and having a full-time job that like I really look forward to every day, and that like like editing. I don't know if I want to be the editor of a publication, a full editor of a publication someday, but like actually being in, being in control of content and like seeing a process from start to finish. I'm not going to be able to do that for a couple of years in whatever field I choose. So being able to do that right now.